in Heavy Mechanical. You might have seen some of my uh, reels or shorts on uh, Instagram. It's Pat's Insta by the gram. Go, out and check, go and check it out if you haven't. Um, and Facebook's just Patrick Coward. So uh, today I'm just going to run through and give you a bit more in depth on one of the reels that I did and uh, it was uh, excavator performance. So, And you know, basically it's the way I like to approach an excavator when I get a complaint it's not an obvious one like you know you've got black smoke bellowing out of one stack. Um, you know, it's a basically a, a slow hydraulics or you know lack of breakout or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, I'm going to give you some analogies to help you understand what's in a hydraulic circuit and uh, why I do these tests. Um, so basically, we start off with our horsepower engine pump that creates the flow uh, MCV or control valve that directs the flow. Uh, and in that you have your main reliefs uh, that sets and maintains system pressure and then the secondaries. Uh, they are a shock protector, so they protect from spikes. So when the control valve is in the neutral position, say for example, you slam your boom down into the ground, that bucket gets smashed, it, uh, it, it prevents spikes and damage to that one circuit. Uh, and then moving forward, you have your load side of the, 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 the thing, which is uh, load side of the circuit, which is the load, uh, either a cylinder or a motor. So I'm gonna give you some analogies now of how I like to think about these things. Um, so an MCV or a control valve, I like to think of that as a, as a relay, like a 12 volt relay, it works exactly the same way. So uh, low current switching high current. In a, in a control valve, you have low pressure switching high pressure. Simple as that, right? And then you have your uh, main relief, which I like to think of this as a circuit breaker, it feeds many secondary reliefs. So our secondary reliefs, our shock protectors and spike protectors, I like to think of them as a fuse. They protect that one circuit. Uh, and then your load is just as simple as that. It, it is what it is. Um, so first up, understanding this is uh, how I go about approaching an excavator when it's, a, when it's a complaint. So straight up, first thing is check drift. Um, so this is checking our uh, secondaries and our cylinders. So this is the elimination process basically. So straight up throw your attachment out and uh, go and have a listen to your secondaries. If you can hear a hissing um, secondary, chances are you got boom drift and you can hear a, a hiss, uh, chances are it's going to be that secondary. So you can confirm it by just getting an infrared gun or a temp gun and, and temp shooting it, but most of the time you can generally tell, um, it, you, you can hear it screaming. So. Um, and then if it's not a secondary and you've still got boom drift, you go and get your temp gun and you go and temp shoot your cylinder. So uh, obviously the bypassing oil is what's creating the heat. So for example, one cylinder is 65 degrees and then you go over to the other cylinder and it's 72 degrees where the piston is. That means that there's oil bypassing creating heat. Um, and then now to confirm this, to give more information and not just going off a temperature, you go into the uh, returns and you pull your returns, check your mag screens and check your filters for um, seal material. So uh, keep in mind with that too, with the drift, uh, on the smaller excavators, you're gonna have load check valves. They shut the uh, cylinder off from the valve bank. Um, so it could still be a secondary. You have to activate that load check valve to, um, to confirm if it's a secondary or not. But moving forward, um, it's not drift. Uh, then we move on to cycle time. So, if it's a large excavator, you're gonna have twin engines. Um, so first up, just both engines, check your cycle times. Um, and then if you know cycle time's good, then you go and do single engine and you might have, for example, erratic operation on one of those engines. So you've eliminated the other engine. You don't need to look at that until you rectify um, the engine that has erratic operation. So that's a regulation issue. So it could be as simple as a speed sensor or a Y4. So a couple of things that regulate on those pumps, just a couple of simple explanations is a Y3 is operated demand, you pull full rack um, and that strokes the pump up. And then the Y4 is what protects your horsepower. It reads off the speed sensor from your ECM. And when it when those pumps bog that engine down too much, it starts to de-stroke the pumps a bit to bring that horsepower back up and keeps it in the hydraulic torque curve. Um, so then again, we're, cycle times are great, uh, maybe a little bit slow, that's when I go and get the gauges out and um, you know, some machines you can do it through the dash, I don't really trust that, but uh, I'll go and plumb my gauges in and check my main reliefs um, and, and you know, pull boom up, make sure all four valve banks are good if they're, you know, generally you're going to find one that mightn't be. Um, 
and then uh, check servos as well too. Generally, you can check that at a glance through the through the screen or uh, whatever, straight up the grease controller, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a bit more depth on the main reliefs as well too, and some other things I like to do. Say if you uh, you've got an operator that is. Uh, complaining about his his well, when I throw my bucket out, it's it's slow. Um, when I'm loading the trucks, for example, uh, it could just be a soft stop. So then, when you've got your gauges on there, you know you go pull, boom up, hold it, main relief, all four valve banks good. Um, st stick out all three valve banks, main relief's good, um, and then you go to your bucket throw out, and only one valve bank is working. You know it's meant to have uh, I think it's meant to have two. Um, you know that. Okay, well, I've got a, um, I've got a, an issue with the control valve, whether it be a control side or an electrical side of things. But it's that's the process, you know. You go through and eliminate things until, um, you know, if you if you're unfamiliar, especially is, is is go through and eliminate as much as you can. And uh, that's the whole idea of this is just to give you a basic overview of about how I go about things. You know, it might necessarily be the same way and sometimes I will cheat the system because I operate saying, you know, I'll, I'll ask questions, um, oh, you know, have you got any implement drift on this? And, oh yeah, no, when I'm sitting there and waiting for a truck, the bucket's drifting, well, you, you know that you don't necessarily have to go and look at the other circuits. So it's, it's things like that you pick up with experience. Um, you know, I'm no guru, but what I lack in experience and, and skill, I, I make up for in enthusiasm. And, you know, this is a little process that I've come up with I've shared it with quite a few people and, and spoken to quite a few guys that are experienced and they have very similar processes. But yeah, we're looking for start out, boom, drift, cycle times, single engine cycle times, main reliefs and servos. Um, and generally, you're not going to find the fault maybe sometimes, but you're going to know, all right, I don't have to be looking at drift. I don't have to be looking at horsepower and regulation. I'm looking at a um at a, at a control side of things so hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight eventually i'm going to do some um some videos and i'll give you some really good examples of what i've come across over the years and how i've gone about diagnosing it um this is how i always go about um testing when it's not an obvious fault this is the process i follow uh, if you've enjoyed it, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, yeah, I'm going to pump out some more videos and, and give you some, some, some really good examples of uh, some failures. And uh, yeah, hopefully we will both learn something. So cheers.